I feel like this is okay, right? Yeah, this is okay. Okay. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Good morning. It is way too early. We were way too early. We, <clears throat> we, we didn't fall asleep until like 3 a.m. And it's like not even 7.30. So, cheers. Living our best life. <laughs> Today's video, we are going to be talking about veganism and what it means to us. And basically telling you guys our story. And uh, we just wanted to say some disclaimers before we get started because... I don't want comments happening that are just negative and unnecessary. So, disclaimer, we are not med medical professionals, okay, at all whatsoever. I am not vegan yet, um, even though I've been eating plant-based for two, almost two and a half-ish months. And Stephanie has been vegan for over a year. And uh, we do not know everything, and we are learning every day. We just are making this video to share our story and to hopefully reach out to somebody. Hire one person to want to look into veganism. Just one. Like, if it inspires more than one, cool. But, like, one is our goal, and I feel yes. like that we can achieve that throughout this video. Hopefully. So, um, if you guys uh, are interested or want to learn more, then just keep watching. <laughs> We're gonna start off with my story and then we're gonna go into Stephanie's. Um, so I was diagnosed with PCOS around the age of 14 or 15. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, an acronym for a really long phrase called polycystic ovarian syndrome. I w have always been like, not fat, but like overweight. And I 100% feel like that it's based off the food I ate, plus I was, you know, had PCOS and all that fun stuff. I will interject, she's never been fat. I've never been fat. She's I've just always been, been like overweight. Like, I have. She's perfect. Uh, thanks. I've always loved animals. Like, if there was a dead cat on the side of the road, I would cry for it. I just, I've always loved animals, like 100%. If there was an animal and I could pet it, I would freaking do it. Um, and to this day, I still like love animals, but I feel like my love for animals have grown immensely. Uh, in 2015, I was introduced by this uh, woman called Miss Heather um, by vegan uh, to veganism, and she really just opened my eyes to what veganism is. And I love this woman uh, not only for that, but just like for who she is as a person. She makes she tries to make the world a better place in any way that she can, and I feel like that she's 100% inspired me to do that as well. And um, I've been very blessed to know somebody like that because if I didn't, I don't know where I would be. Like, I know I have that compassion within myself because she, like, opened it to me, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have her at first. And so... She was able to answer any questions I had all the time. And the main thing that she did was answered everything with love and compassion because obviously we are brainwashed as infants into adulthood that meat is protein and meat is good for you and cheese is good for you and this, that, and the other thing. When And then you have somebody who's like, no, 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 that's not right. And you have questions. So obviously there's things that you want answered and you don't understand it. And she just was very good about answering any questions I had. Um, I do remember, like when you were when you were there in that time that you were trying all this vegan stuff. Yeah, and it was exciting. It was. It was I wasn't exciting. exposed to it before, and it, it no. was pretty cool. It was very very exciting. Um, and in 2015, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I think I lost like over 60 pounds. And majority of that was situational, to be fair. But I, as Stephanie mentioned, I was eating a lot more plant-based food than I had ever in my life. Um, I had always strived to be, like, the healthier person by, like, eating white meat and, like, a little bit of cheese or whatever. But I was never that point of, like, healthy that I thought I was until I was there and with her and... Um, I just was exposed to a lot more plant-based food and she had just started 
I don't know if she had just started her vegan journey. I don't want to say that because I don't 100% know if that was true, but she would definitely was still like growing in her vegan journey. She wasn't 100% plant-based. Um, and she definitely still had struggles and she definitely still had like times where she would, where she would mess up or she would fall and she would just have to pick herself, pick herself back up and do her whole thing. Anyways, but I literally ate vegan food like three or four times a week because that's what she would cook for dinner and I had that for dinner. Um, then I heard about um, people reversing like their health problems like diabetes and high blood pressure and um, what's another one? Like diabetes, high blood pressure, a cholesterol issue. Yeah, cholesterol issues, all that kind of stuff. And I just was like, hmm, just by like a plant-based diet. And I just was like, huh, mm -hmm. I wonder if there's like a thing for like PCOS. So I looked it up because if you have PCOS, there's uh, you're at high risk for not only diabetes, but you're also high risk for like not having kids. And I want to have kids at some point in my life. And so I did some research and I found that people have completely reversed their PCOS from food. And I, my mind was blown. I was like, plants can reverse That's my- amazing. Plants can reverse my issue. Like what? Why are why do people not know? Plants. <laughs> literally, literally, power yeah. of plants. But I just Amazing. was so confused. I was like, why do more people not know about this? Because if I can do it, why can't somebody else who has like diabetes mm -hmm. or something that they can easily fix? Um, and I just was amazed, and I knew in my heart that I was meant to be vegan, and I knew in my heart that I had to start my vegan journey then. Because if I didn't, I, I was never going to. Yeah. And so, and I knew the only way that I could make a difference, not only in the world for like animal wise and like animal cruelty, but also in myself was through veganism. So I would say that my journey started about in 2015, um, but I didn't really take it seriously until about like 2017. Um, I cut out uh, foods for periods of time. So I started out with red meat. I was never a huge fan of red meat anyways yeah. um, because it just wasn't, I don't know, like I just wasn't a huge fan of it. And um, I slowly cut that out and that one was really easy for me. Um, but as you're cutting things out, you lean more towards on like the other stuff that you still can eat. Chicken. So fish, chicken, fish, yeah. turkey, all that kind of stuff. And the white meat definitely, the white meat portion of me cutting it out was definitely the hardest part for me. Um, because I had leaned on it so much when I was not eating red meat and apparently it's a lot healthier for you, which is not, it's all, it's terrible. It's all the same carcinogen food group. But um, we'll get more into that later. And I just slowly cut out things bit by bit. And if I reached like a month goal without eating it and I felt confident that I wasn't going to eat it again, I would move on to the next thing. And it's all about like learning your body and knowing like, this is overexposed, it's killing me. But it's all about knowing your body and like knowing what you can handle. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie went vegan overnight. Yeah, we are very different. I would say her way is probably better. I'm an all or nothing person, yeah. so it's either it's happening 100% yeah. or not at all. So I would recommend doing it slow. Go at your pace. Don't feel like you have to do it overnight yes. because then you might fail. You Don't know? feel like that you, uh, like she said, have to do it overnight, but yeah. also you can't, ch you can't save the world overnight. Like no. you can't save them all overnight, and so... And that was like my biggest problem was like my heart was there, but like my taste in my tongue mm -hmm. wasn't. And I just was like, yeah. but why, you know? And like if you end up feeling like I'm very proud of her for, for doing this for two and a half months, it's a big accomplishment. Yeah. She may not feel it, but um, if you do mess up, it's okay. Yeah, like, you just it is. Keep going. It's a hundred percent okay. Don't give up though. Every single step is worth it. Mm -hmm. Every single step matters. And regardless if that's like, not using plastic straws because that affects mm -hmm. our oceans and our dead zones that we have or not using k-cups like if you get a reusable like k-cup thing you certainly can do that every day it's small steps are better than no steps yeah. um and i i did i struggled a lot like i had moments where i was like having inner battles with myself and i was like yeah, but everybody eats this food. Why can't I? But 
I also knew what was happening to not only our earth, but also in my body. And I just was like, I was conflicted. And so I just had to make a decision and I chose to do veganism. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, I really had to learn the hard way that people are not accepting. Oh, not even a little bit. People mm -hmm. are like very, they're very rude. And I understand why they're rude because it's something different and it's something mm -hmm. that they don't want to know because they're comfortable with their lifestyle. And the only reason that we are or have found veganism is because we were uncomfortable with our lifestyles. Yeah. So, Ignorance is bliss. And it they're is. freaking 100%. blissful. And, um, 100%. Yeah, like, a lot of people do think that veganism is, like, trendy and, like, everyone's doing it, but in reality, it's not well accepted. It's, it's not. It's not at all. People think you're a freak, and that's okay. People I mean, think that you're psycho because yeah. we have canines and we're supposed to eat meat when it's just <gasps> not... This is not freaking gorillas, man. <laughs> gorillas have the largest canine, and they are herbivores. Oh, it's annoying. It's, it's so aggravating. Your canines, they're not big at all. So your get canines over your cannot thigh. rip flesh. Okay, <laughs> just don't try it. Don't try this at home. Nasty. Kids, okay, it's gross. But I, I had to learn that like, no matter what, I had to defend myself and speak for the voiceless because if I wasn't going to, Good point. who would? Who would? Exactly. Who would sit there and defend, you know, this dead cow that's on your plate or this dead chicken or this dead fish that's on your plate? Yeah. And if I wasn't going to, especially around the people that I am around, then who is going to? So um, I, there, people are going to poke fun. People are going to laugh. People are going to make jokes. And the best thing I have learned to do is to just laugh with them and be like, haha, yeah, you think it's funny, but like, here's some facts for you. And mm -hmm. if you have a comfortable relationship with whoever's talking to you about it and like making fun of you, spread some light. Like, mm -hmm. do whatever you have to do because they're naive. They're as naive as you were. So yeah. you have to be the voice for the people that don't really care to like know. Um. I will say one thing real quick. Um, yeah. A lot to a lot of times, like our families don't really support us. Like, no, it it sucks, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I will say that sometimes it can come around. My family wasn't really supportive in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but we went on a cruise as a family, and I stayed vegan the whole time. They were like, "Oh, just just eat, you know, whatever." And yeah. they kind of started accepting it. So yeah, once you. I guess prove to them that this is going to be your lifestyle. It's not a phase. They may come around. 100%. It may take a while, but they will. 100%. I feel like that my family would like poke fun at me because I was like, yeah, I'm vegan. And then I would stop. And yeah, I'm vegan. Mm -hmm. And I would stop. Or yeah, I'm vegetarian. And I would stop. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. my journey literally started in 2015 and it's now 2018. So yeah. three years I've been, you know, vegan or attempting veganism or and everything like that and I had I failed multiple times and everyone's journey is different everybody's journey is different and that's exactly what I had to tell myself <clears throat> because yep. if I was doing a small thing to help an animal then it I knew I was doing good it, it mattered a hundred percent because we vote with our dollar so yep. if I was to go to the grocery store and not buy red meat I was choosing not to support the pig industry or the cow industry. Mm -hmm. And yes, I was still choosing at the time to buy chicken and fish and I was still hurting those animals and I was still choosing to like, I was choosing to support that industry, but I was still saving the pig and the cow. And even though it wasn't, you know, fully vegan yet, I was still trying to make a conscious effort to help whoever I could at the time. Um, and actually my brother last night asked me if I was still eating eggs because he's noticed that I've been 100% committed and he's noticed that I'm just kind of like over this wishy-washy guessing game and I'm just like no like I believe this I need to support it and this is how I'm supporting it and like he asked me if I was still eating eggs and I was like no I haven't eaten eggs in a very long time and I don't intend on going back yeah so yeah 
Ellen Fisher said this quote, and Ellen Fisher is one of our favorite <laughs> oh YouTubers. Oh my gosh, I love She's, her sister too. She's so do so I. So cute. Hannah is great. <laughs> Hannah is like my inner. Can like, we just like being. go out to lunch with both of them, please? I I would seriously <laughs> love that. Hit us up, okay? Please. <laughs> For real. <laughs> she did a video with James and Carly, which are vegan activists that are uh, based in Australia, and said, "How can it be good for our stomachs if it's not good for our eyes?" And it's so true. Like, if you can't even sit there and watch a four-minute video, uh, which is titled A Thousand Eyes, she said, if you can't even make it past that four-minute video, by watching it, how can it be good for your stomach? Yep. How can it be? Because like, it's not. I, to this day, am 100% committed to becoming fully vegan. I'm thankful for, like, my journey and what it has been. And for me, I just want people to know that, like, no matter how you are feeling or like how many people in your life are like, no, don't do that. Or no matter like if you are getting made fun of or anything, just keep going. Believe that you are actually making a difference and know that you are making a difference. And even though it doesn't seem like it because there's so much cruelty happening that we just can't undo and it's heartbreaking, but we can't undo all of it. And I know for a fact that if I could, I would, but I can't, so I'm gonna do my best. And if your best is doing small steps and taking three freaking years to go vegan, take three years to go vegan yep. and it's okay. Like I promise you it is okay to take that long. I mean, I wish, <laughs> I wish I could go vegan overnight, but I not everybody's like that. Your journey is just as beautiful. Like it's yeah. you that's why yours is so much longer. Like you, <laughs> we have <laughs> notes. Honey. <laughs> you like inspired me, which I will talk about in a second. So Oh I'm done. All work oh okay, well I'll talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um yeah, my journey is different. Uh I'm more selfish in every way so my journey was about myself and about my body and it honestly only recently did i make the connection with animals and like that they are feeling pain and i i've looked more into like factory farming and animal cruelty and i've made the connection but when yeah. i went vegan it honestly was not about the animals it was about my body and about the environment and um and if that's how it is that's okay like yeah I think that for every person who's considering going vegan, find something that just breaks your heart. So something, yeah. whether it be the oceans or plastic yeah. or the rainforest or animal agriculture, Any of all it. that stuff, whatever just really breaks your heart and makes you cry, um, then that's kind of your thing and kind of roll with it. You know, look into it and that will probably make you go vegan. Oh, so. 100%. Like, do your research yeah. and you know it 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 blows my mind because there's so many people that are like yeah i'm lactose intolerant mm -hmm. or yeah i have high blood pressure or yeah and i'm like eh, no let like, me help you <laughs> please let me, let me help please <laughs> go vegan <laughs> no but like you know people are lactose intolerant because they're not a baby calf Ma yes. Cow's milk. Hi. <laughs> She's like, hey, I'm me. lactose intolerant. Oh. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, you're not, you're not, you're lactose intolerant because you're not a baby calf. Cow's milk is Bacon true. specifically for baby calves. Like, breast milk is specifically for baby humans, mm -hmm. and giraffe's milk is specifically made for giraffes. It is not normal for us it's to have. Disgusting. <laughs> I mean, do you know what's in if milk? If you can't drink it out of the teat, it's not right. Okay? Thank you! If you can't go up Thank to you. a cow and, and go, naturally do that. Suck it out of the teat. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, we don't recommend, but like... Don't. <laughs> That's disgusting. But like, you know what I mean? Like you, I am just saying, like you, all these people are just like okay with taking lactate every day because that's how Girl, that used to be my life <laughs> i would take two tablets and i would eat queso and then i so wouldn't bad. blow up it was so <laughs> bad but like it's so unnecessary it's so unnecessary it's unhealthy and it's expensive and it's so it's expensive good. it's not good i can't even imagine like the amount of money you've saved by be being vegan for a year yeah. for like not only just animal agriculture aside but like 
also your health. Yeah, and, and like, like, honestly, I don't cook a lot, so I would buy chicken, and I would put it in the fridge, and it would go bad, and it was nasty. Yeah. And I never would cook it, because I would just want to eat, like, I don't know, boxed meals and yeah. frozen stuff. So it, it's just better. But um, during her, like, journey, she actually did, um, like, bring me around to YouTube. Like, I knew what it was, but she was always way more interested in it obviously. And uh, I ain't got a Obvious. channel. <laughs> um, and so she like introduced me to, I don't know, a lot of people. A lot. Of we watched people. a lot of friggin' videos. Yeah, and Ellen did. Fisher was one of them. And I was like, I love this lady. Can I be her? I mean, I want to move to Hawaii because I of mean, her. <laughs> I want to eat some papaya for breakfast. It yes. doesn't taste like butt. Ew, like, ours here tastes like vomit. It tastes like bile. It's, it's not, disgusting. It's not good. <laughs> It's not good at Nasty. all. Nasty. Um, but, like, the papaya she has, I'm like, apparently it's like, can I have some of that, please? Right now. <laughs> Anyways. But, but, yeah, so I was inspired, and I, I looked more into her videos, and she was like, oh, watch these videos. And I was like, all right, I guess I will, because you told me. So I watched What the Health, Cowspiracy, What the Food, and Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. I'll link in the description box below. Yeah, links. <laughs> and, um, yeah, they, they were really life-changing I didn't realize how bad meat was mm -hmm. for us and the effects even on people's houses around factory farms it's yeah. disgusting it's and like awful. it's inhumane to, to everything even then I really didn't make the connection with the animals but I did realize that a lot of our rainforest is torn down so we can make room for factory farming and I was yeah. like this is dead wrong it's like, not okay we cannot keep up with the demand of this meat and trying is just inhumane it's trying awful. is literally killing our planet it's killing our planet like i forget what statistic i read i don't know if it's by like i don't want to say 2020 i think it's like 2030 or 2040 like we're not gonna have room at all because no, of how happen. our yeah. population is growing so fast like and if everybody like if if the vegans stayed the percentage of ve uh, veganism is not growing and it stays where it is now and the growth of and demand of the meat industry continues to grow, we're not gonna have room for any of this yeah. at all on this planet. 100% nothing. It's just insane. Like, it's insane that people are ignorant. We were ignorant, 100%. you know? Our eyes are open now and, and we get it, but it just sucks because our, our planet is suffering. Yeah. And um, I mean, yeah. we are Christians and, and yeah. we, we don't believe that this is how God intended it. No. I mean, I know in, in Bible times they did eat meat and they did do sacrifices. We don't need well, sacrifices. Obviously, we don't do that now. now. But um, yeah, we don't. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think that, you know, it was different in Bible times. There weren't factory farms. It's, yeah. it's just. We've industrialized it, and we've taken it to an inhumane level, and and it's wrong. It is wrong, and I 100% agree. I believe that the factory farming is just not how God intended it. No. Because that's not, like, in Bible times, you don't, like, in, like, the Old Testament, you don't read about, like, thousands and thousands and no. hundreds and millions of animals dying for us to eat. You know what you do read about? Shepherds taking care of yes. their sheep. If one went away, they would go find it. Like, yeah. they loved their animals, and we're just not doing that We're anymore. not. We're using them as objects, and they're Exploiting not. Them. And exactly. Yeah. They're not objects. They're not objects. They oh, are. Don't even get us started on animal testing and fur. That's a whole nother can of worms that we will I just can't even handle that about. right now. I can't even handle that right Again. now. <laughs> if you are a Christian, and you, you know, believe that, like, because it does say in the Bible that, you know, God put the animals on the earth for us to eat. It does say that. I I know that. And I agree with things that are in the Bible. But I just know that in my heart that this is just not how God wanted it. Like, he's, we have a loving God. So yeah. why would he be okay with this and what our planet is doing and I all mean, the cruelty our we're planet ra is we're doing. raping cows there's no way there's no way that that's saying. okay that, at it's all it's natural for them to be in the wild like this yeah. bothers me i've been saying this for a whole year when is the last time you've seen a cow in the wild i have never seen a cow in the wild i've only yeah. seen them on on farms i'm like i want to go somewhere where i can see some cows in the wild and them just having their life their life like their living families. out their lives on the mountainside the eating their grass yeah. you know what i mean not being stuck well, I think mountainside might be goats whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's living, an animal living in a field yeah eating some grass doing their life whatever whatever cows do for fun and 
Yeah. Like not being trapped in a cage that literally is the size of their body and then getting raped and then getting their babies taken away from them. It's disgusting. Like you got to have a heart. I mean, really, you, yeah. you've got to have empathy if you do have it. And if you go searching for vegan stuff, it's going to pull at your heartstrings. And, and you're going to start it's not things. Because it's not right. Like We know in our hearts it's not right. A perfect example is that a lion will look at a gazelle and be like, mm, that's tasty. I want to go kill it. We look at it like a deer or a bunny and we're like, oh, that's adorable. We don't instinctly think I want to kill it with my mouth. Like that, if we yeah. didn't have weapons, which I mean, I'm a, I'm pro guns because I think that, you know, you should be able to protect yourself in like your house. Self. Right. Literally. Hashtag don't be mean to us in the comments, <laughs> but please, <laughs> but you know, I, I'm a hundred percent guns, but if we didn't have weapons to go kill these animals, we wouldn't have a way to kill them because we don't have them with our mouth. Be real with yourself. Like yeah. if they put, if they put a pig in a room with a couple people and they were like, one person, go up there, have nothing else but your claws. My claws, my canines. And your canines and kill and eat this pig without cooking it and be fine and have sustained energy. There's no way. There's you no would way. get sick and you would die from yeah. eating uncooked pig. Yeah, there's 100%. 100%. This isn't realistic. That, um, yeah. Uh, I did want to mention something else. It goes along with what she was saying, and this is just, it amazes me, it disgusts me. If we allowed the countries who are growing the grain, which are typically a third world country with a bunch of starving children, if we allowed them <laughs> to keep the grain that Another they do, like, grow, keep it, feed them to your children, please allow them to have a healthy life instead of feeding it to enslaved animals over here in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could end world hunger. Like, uh, literally. in reality, we could, but pe it would make people uncomfortable and... It would make people uncomfortable because they're, they're normalized and um, cultured thing is not happening anymore. They would have to eat vegetables. They would have to eat vegetables and grain. The world would end. <laughs> the world would be like, what is happening? Yeah. But yeah. So, it's just not... I hope this is, was helpful to people. I, I hope I, so, too. I hope it made sense. I hope so, too. Hope th they're going to totally light us up in, in the uh, comments about the guns thing. But you know what? Whatever. It's okay. I'm believe you protect I'm your house. I'm sticking up for what I believe in, okay? All right, we're not getting into any school shootings here. We're just saying for personal home security. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, a couple things that a facts that I found um not only like in the past, but just doing a little bit of research for this video because I know that Yes, I'm going to leave a crap ton of links in the description box, but I know for a fact not everybody's going to like look at them. Um and if you've made it this far in the video, Thanks. Congra Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! Wow. <laughs> um, but I just want to mention that from a Global Citizen, the article is Nine Ways Veganism is Helping the Planet. 70% of the uh, grain grown in, US, uh, in the U.S. feeds livestock and globally 83% of, far of farmland is set aside to raise animals. So, like, just put, that, put those numbers into perspective just for a second. Like, just for a second. So, 70% of the grain that is made is going to the livestock that is going to die. And, yeah, not going to these people that are hungry and that can't eat that. Give it to the starving kids. Literally. But they Please. don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. And 83% of our farmland is set aside for factory farming. Like, that's a lot of our land. That's a lot of land. That's, that's a, a lot of slaughtered animals. That's so bad. That's so bad. Like, it's so unnecessary. It's unnecessary death. It's an unnecessary um, massacre. It's what it is. It's an unnecessary massacre. 700 million tons of food that goes to livestock each year. And basically, we just need to eliminate the middleman which is the cows and the pigs and the chickens and the lamb and the rabbits and everything that is either animal tested or oh, gosh. that is slaughtered for our taste buds, which yeah. honestly, it's just the seasoning that we crave. Because yeah. if you eat the meat itself without any flavoring, you really wouldn't love it that much. No, it's not good. And I season tofu like I would season my chicken. Ooh, yeah. And it is amazing. It's very good. Um, 
basically we just need to eliminate the middleman in general. In one whole year of being vegan, which is this is what you've saved, you save 401,500 gallons of water, you save 10,950 square feet of rainforest, you save 14,600 pounds of grain, and you save 365 animals' lives. Yay! From being vegan. It was all worth it. Like, <laughs> are you serious right now? It's amazing. Like, that is so amazing in every way possible. Yay. Oh, and also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this part in. Bonus. Bonus, bonus fact. Um, you also save 7,300 pounds of uh, carbon. The Dang. carbon fo- car- Your carbon footprint. Like, it's lessened by that's that much. really, really, that's really cool. It's amazing. Um, another fun fact from nutritionfacts.org. Uh, researchers have shown that a more plant-based diet have helped prevent, treat, or reverse some of our leading causes of death, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. I'm telling you people, plants are a game changer. Plants are lifesavers. Yeah. And... Plants are literally all we're meant to have, and we're killing ourselves by putting this meat into our bodies. Watch these links that she's going to put down there, um, and and you're really going to see. Like, I think it's fat, sick, and nearly dead. Where it opened yeah. my eyes. Like, these people, they they get off all their medication. They 100%. really do. They get blood tests. Yeah. Make sure they they're able to. Literally within like two weeks, it's insane. these people are off of all of like their ten bottles of medicine that they've had to take for yeah. years. It's like getting released from bondage of your medicine. You can yeah. live your life. You're good. Yeah, and I just mm-hmm. encourage every single one of you that have made it through this video to do some sort of research, regardless if it's watching a video or reading an article or a little bit of both or watching more vegan YouTubers that are very passionate about veganism. Also, I mean, if you go on Pinterest and you I mean, look yeah. up, that's what I do, and I literally, I cry. Literally, <laughs> all social like, media platforms have some sort of like outlet. It. Yeah, and I also did want to state something like, you don't need to think you need to be a perfect vegan. I am right. by no means and have never been a perfect vegan. I've never been fully raw, whatever the heck. Yeah. I mean, if you eat Doritos and Oreos and that's your way of transitioning to veganism, yeah. do it. I mean, I mean it's not sustainable. It's, it's not. not good for you, but if that's how you're going to get through it, if you're going to eat a bunch I of gardein, literally, transfer. It's okay. It's okay. Like, my meat replacements, I love my meat replacements my family so loves the guardian vegan meatballs oh yes. um the meatball subs i make them oh, literally it's a it's a crowd favorite it's great um mm-hmm. my fiance uh and i had chicken tenders the guardian chicken tenders oh. and mac and cheese for dinner one day and he was like this is really good. I'm like, I know, because it's freaking delicious. Really good. And, you know, there are so many ways to eat vegan. Yeah, there really are. Okay, yeah. so I hope that this video was informational or helpful in any way, shape, or form. I also really hope that this opened up somebody's eyes and they go through the thousands of links I'm going to have in the description box below. They made it through us. They did. They made it through. Congratulations. Woo! You made it to the end. I know that the, you never thought this was coming, but I promise it's here. There's no prize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's bad. But yes, um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Thanks for so much for being on here You're with welcome. me. I am so happy that you were here. Aw, it was fun. It was great. But yes, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. And yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> that. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> insane, okay. <laughs> you nasty. I'm <laughs> a gassy human. You are. <laughs> okay. okay, we're overtired. Uh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs>